Come in here for a second. I want to share with you today an incredible story involving a woman who presented to her gynecologist with a breast lump and how the testimony of a technician from the radiology facility wound up costing them hundreds of thousands of dollars all because they failed to follow protocol. You want to learn about this crazy story? Come join me as I share with you this remarkable information. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury trial lawyer practicing law here in the state of New York. So here's the scenario. A young woman feels a lump in her breast, goes to a gynecologist. The gynecologist sends her off immediately to have a sonogram done and a mammogram. And now she goes to this radiology facility and they do a sonogram of her. And the technician tells her, listen, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Nothing shows up on the sonogram. And that's exactly what happens. Unfortunately for this young patient, she did in fact have breast cancer. And her breast cancer was not diagnosed for an entire year. And when it was finally diagnosed, it was advanced. Now it was stage 3B. So now when this breast cancer victim brought a lawsuit seeking compensation for the harms and losses she suffered because of the radiology facility's negligence, their carelessness in not doing the right thing, here's what I had an opportunity to ask the technician and the supervisor in this particular case. I wanted to know what happens when a young woman comes in, has a sonogram, she has a palpable lump in her breast, what is the protocol in your radiology facility? What do you do? And the testimony I was able to get out from the supervisor at the radiology facility is, in every instance, in a young patient where now they have a palpable breast lump that's not detected on sonogram, their protocol, their procedure is that the radiologist, that's the doctor who specializes in interpreting and reading these sonograms and mammograms, they are required to come into the patient's examining room, do a physical examination of the patient's breast, and then re-sono the patient. And that's what both of them told me. And once I had that information, I was now able to lock them in to show to the defense that we were 100% correct that they violated the basic standards of medical care of their own policies and procedures. So how did I do that? I did that through the testimony of my client. She was able to testify that when she went in and had the procedure done, they told her that the sonogram was fine and that she only needed to go back and follow up with the gynecologist. At no time did the radiologist come in to examine her, ever. And when I questioned the supervisor at the radiology facility, I said, let me ask you a question. Isn't it good medical practice that if the radiologist does in fact come in and examine the patient, that they make a note of that in the patient's chart? Yes, that's true. And is there anything in this patient's chart to indicate or confirm that a doctor made a note in this patient's record? No. And now I went through a whole series of questions to establish that if the doctor had seen and examined the patient, it would be good medical practice to go ahead, make an entry in the patient's chart, and then send that information off to the gynecologist. And there was absolutely nothing in this patient's records to indicate that that was done, which merely supported and bolstered our claim that the radiology facility violated their very own standards and procedures. So why do I share this quick information with you? I share it with you to explain one story where the failure to follow their own procedures and policies resulted in liability against this radiology facility in this tragic breast cancer case. You know, I realize you're watching this because you likely have questions or concerns about your own particular matter. Well, if your matter happened here in New York and you do have legal questions, what I encourage you to do is pick up the phone and call me. I can answer your legal questions. You know, this is something I do every single day and I'd love to talk to you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's quick video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a remarkable day.